Welcome to the Business Owner Spotlight Series. My name is Gabriel Moore. I am the senior partner here at Action Coach Vanguard in Central Iowa. Today, I have Parker Davis, the owner of Scent Creative, as my guest. We're going to be talking about his business, journey to business ownership, challenges, best practices, and share a peek into what it's really like to build and operate a business. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations, just like this one. Parker, welcome, and thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Gabriel. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm excited to just chat with you and talk about the business. Heck yes. Hey, give me a brief overview of your background. Tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. your business. Yeah, so uh, it's kind of kind of fun. I actually started out uh, just as a hobby photographer with, uh, I remember making home videos with my cousin just on a camcorder and then using my parents' camera for photography. So I can relate. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So terrible audio quality, terrible video quality when I was like 10 or 12 making those videos. But um, it was a lot of fun because when I was in high school, my I was using my parents' camera and found opportunities uh, to shoot for the school yearbook. I went to Ankeny Christian Academy and okay. there's nobody else with a camera. So it gave me a lot of opportunities to get practice wow. and uh, just start to grow a love for photography and also for video too. Okay. Um, and so that was really a lot of fun because I just kind of figured it out on my own. I didn't have any professional training. It was just YouTube and figuring it out. Um, and then once I was graduating high school, I realized that I was like, okay, you can actually do this for work, which was kind of exciting because I was kind of stumped. I'm like, I don't really know what I'm passionate about other than nice. photo and video. So, um, yeah, I realized that film school was going to be way too expensive. So I stayed local at, and went to DMAC and got my associates in photography, got some, took some video classes and then also uh, took a couple of business and marketing classes. It's not like I did a full, uh, like their full program by any means, but just a couple of intro classes to start getting a little bit more knowledge. Um, That's actually then, yeah, perfect. For, you yeah. learn in the skill, right? You learn the skill of sweat equity, yep. right? You learn the skill. Then you dove mm -hmm. into uh, learn a little bit more advanced techniques with the skill. And then you yeah. actually applied a little bit of business knowledge uh, because in the end, if you're a business owner, you probably don't want to be the guy that's editing all the time and shooting the camera all the time. And maybe right now it's like fun, I'm sure. But eventually yeah. you're going to want to kind of move out of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's definitely something that I would eventually want to scale. Um, and even if it is having like a larger team, I think that'd be awesome. Like having people edit yeah. having um, like, even I know some people have their business structure where they can send out other photographers, other videographers that are shooting within the same style, their editors editing in the same style. Uh, right now, it's definitely not to that point. It's still just me, uh, still uh, just the sole member and like only person on the team. Okay. Um, but it has been a lot of fun to just like over the years because I graduated um, in 2021. So uh, right after COVID and things were still kind of a little weird with just yeah. trying to figure out what's going on and then um, was just trying to make stuff work. But thankfully, um, I've been able to get a lot of experience alongside other photographers and videographers. There's at least Very good. four that I would kind of rotate through. So being able to take a sneak peek into their business, sneak like sneak peek into their process for shooting, doing mm -hmm. interviews, doing um, stuff in a lot of different industries. Like I've been able to get experience in the agriculture industry, hunting, salons, restaurant. Um, awesome. Okay. Like distribution, shipment. So thankfully I have a lot broader experience than just honing in into like one very specific industry. Right. Um, so I think that's been really cool to just know like our agriculture is a completely different beast than a salon, yeah. but yeah. it's still, you're still able to produce some pretty cool content for either one. Um, yeah. So it's been fun over the past few years to, um, just, I guess, dive in a little bit more into some of those areas that I've never interacted with. But then, um, what that also made me realize is that I was also working at a coffee shop during that time and then just shooting on the side. And I was like, okay, I'm not passionate about coffee. <laughs> like that's not something that, even though <laughs> I love drinking, you don't want to be a really barista wanna, for the rest of your no, life. <laughs> no, not, not really. <laughs> so I think the the cool thing was, is I just realized I'm like, oh, I love this so much more than yeah. I love working at a coffee shop or even I've previously worked in retail and warehouses and stuff like that when I was in high school and just realizing that I'm like, 
yeah, production is where it's at. Like that's where I really have a love and a passion for. Okay. So um, that's when I realized that in, uh, so it was November 16th of 2023, I officially launched Scent Creative. And that was kind of my leap branching off from the coffee industry and taking a deeper dive into actually like, okay, I'm going to make this work. I want to make this work. So it's still super okay. fresh. Still, uh, we're really young here. Be, this is okay. Yep. Yep. Very young. Yep. So um, it's just, it'll be what, four months tomorrow, I believe. Yeah. No, and have you found it? Have you found a really a niche yet? I mean, when, when, uh, when I was doing film, mm -hmm. uh, we, we kind of had a niche, but not really. Yeah, we kind of just uh, did everything. But do you do you do specific type of film or anything? I mean, what's your what are you leaning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've found out over the years, I've pretty much done just about everything that you could okay. think of, whether it's okay. all the way to weddings, to senior photos, mm -hmm. to family photos, to commercials, to like just I've done like pretty much everything. Okay. But I've realized over the years that uh, a lot of the like. Um, consumer type photography and video i wasn't really passionate about too much um for just a very various different reasons it's just not quite in my wheelhouse plus sure. i also realized when i was doing more market research on uh like once i was graduating high or not graduating high school graduating from dmac i realized that there's pretty much like everybody and their mother is a like family photographer in Ankeny. oh so, yeah uh, you it's, got a phone so you're it's, good to go yeah, exactly. So it's very saturated and it's very difficult to compete with the pricing that a lot of other people, they're like, oh, my friend does family photos for like 75 bucks for a whole session and I get a hundred photos. Then so again, is, I realized, that, is that really your competition though? No, it's not. And that's why I realized that I'm like, I don't want to go that route because right. it's just too saturated. So okay. thankfully with that, um, I also realized that uh, i a lot more passionate about working with businesses and um, want to focus on more of the commercial route. So, okay. uh, and that's both for photo and video. So both photo and video, I focus on products, on lifestyle photos, um, lifestyle videos, headshots, uh, commercials, interviews, testimonials, a lot of those different things. So that's really like anything pretty much that a business could use to promote themselves through mm -hmm social media, website, through print, billboards, like anything like that. That's really where I would hone into. Now you can still get a lot more specific than that. Like I know sure. some people who focus on health and wellness or they focus on agriculture. So right. I could even further, um, like further, like get specific, but that's at least kind of where I've honed in now um, on that kind of niche that I'd be focusing okay. in on. Yeah. So what, what makes, what makes, I know, you know, as a young business, there's mm -hmm. a, there's a chance you might not have found it as a solopreneur. Um, you know, it sounds like uh, you're bootstrapping the company, which uh, I've done before. That's something that's yeah. uh, it, it takes a real special person to do something like that and make it successful. What makes your business unique? What do you think you might bring that other people whom you you're competing with aren't bringing? Mm -hmm. So I would say the the first thing that comes to mind is. Um, not everybody shoots both photo and video. Mm -hmm. So uh, some people focus specifically on photography and focus specifically on video, which is great. Um, right. Like they, and they still do an amazing job. But the one thing that sometimes people are looking for is they want both photography and video to out, start outputting for their clients in a similar style. So with that, that's, so that's what I would be able to produce for people is like, they're not having to hire a photographer and a videographer. They can really come to me for, uh, all those services, right? So, yeah, one so stop shop kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Now, once it gets into some of the other uh, creative stuff, like graphic design or visual effects or some of those things, those would have to be outsourced. But when it comes to photography and video, that's where I would have the capabilities to do both of those. Um, mm -hmm. So, if somebody needs a testimonial video and they also need product photos, I would be able to complete both of those for them. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, I'd say that's probably the first uh like main difference that mm -hmm. i would kind of identify but then the second one is um now this would a little bit kind of be in pre-production but then also apply towards video but just asking questions i think is a really big thing and um being able to really see because somebody could say oh i cut hair mm -hmm. and if you leave it there you're gonna have a pretty bland video and pretty bland photos <laughs> so most interesting really ever <laughs> yeah right but then if they say 
I really want to make somebody feel confident with their haircut. It's like, okay, we're getting a little. Uh, and how do you get further. to that, right? What kind of questions? Yeah. What are the quality of those questions? I love this. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So I think really just um, diving into a lot more of the values of the business, okay. because once again, you could say that you're a business coach, right. but then going into that, it's like, okay, well, like, what do you really communicate? Like, what do you, or what are you trying to better businesses with or what how are you trying to improve businesses right and what are you really trying to look for what is the value that you're providing um so both like i would say it comes to the perceived value by the customers but then also um like what you value as a business owner because i think both of those kind of colliding can really communicate a cool story yeah um because then even some businesses it's like the person's passionate about a certain hobby that really bleeds into their business which the customers, customers might not perceive that as value, but it's really cool because it creates a more personal story that somebody can relate to. No, I love um, it. Yeah, you're connecting so kind of the emotional I, element to the logical yeah, element of business. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously a lot of that kind of goes into the marketing of like of a company mm -hmm. where often you do want to, you like, you don't just want to be like, okay, here's the facts. Right. Uh, like that's, that doesn't really make good marketing. So um, some of it does come with just that knowledge of uh, like, how marketing works with people, but then sure. combining that with the creative element, because I'm not necessarily going to come alongside somebody and do their 100% from scratch marketing strategy, but right. being able, being able to uh, like even create a strategy for a specific project. Um, like <clears throat> I did a project with an apparel company uh, that's local to Des Moines. And we really, it was like workout clothes. It's not necessarily a workout brand, but it was like a sweatsuit. So like, okay, okay, what do we want to communicate? The owner loves hip hop. He uh, loves working out and doing calisthenics. And a lot of those things are like, okay, how can we merge some of this world into your brand? And we ended up doing where it was a lot of prep work, like, or uh, it was kind of prepping for a run. And then the uh, we got a bodybuilder to act as our talent. And he was uh, running through Des Moines. And it was like early morning, kind of getting to the grind. And All right. Some of those things. Sun so beating right on the face. A little yeah, sweat morning, yeah. I like it. Yep. So, and it kind of going back to that same, uh, same line of thought where it's like, okay, well, the brand isn't necessarily a workout brand, but combining the owner's passion and also the product's uh, value to the customer together to really create uh, a video that is going to promote the business well. So, yeah, so the that's creative kind of side, yeah. you know, I got Parker on the creative side. Mm -hmm. It's it's sometimes, especially when it comes to film, because film is is mm -hmm. so subjective, right? And uh, we all yeah. want to uh, get that emotion across on on the screen or to whomever that audience is. Um, and I'm always wondering about um, like targeting and stuff like that. How do you help uh, your business owners uh, find their target? I mean, you get you're connecting the hobby and and the 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 actual business. Yep. Love that. What's a, what's mm -hmm. another way that you might actually connect that, uh, for them, uh, to help them find their target if they don't know who it is exactly. Yeah. So thankfully I've been able to, uh, work with a lot of businesses who have already been relatively established. Um, so coming alongside them where it's like, okay, they know they're focusing on women from 18 to 25 okay. in a specific like location that's desiring a specific thing or stuff like that. So okay. it makes it a little bit easier to kind of piggyback off of uh, the demographic that they've already decided. Perfect. Um, but I think, so in those situations, it's obviously a little bit easier because they already have yeah. some of that legwork figured out. But on the other side, um, I think it's kind of like what I said with that clothing brand. Um, like it was actually a startup within, I think the past year. Okay. So um, even coming alongside them and really just, who the owner is ideally trying to like target and really just, I mean, it was with him. Uh, we probably had, I mean, even a few hours of just strategy sessions of like, okay, what are we trying or who are we trying to communicate to with this? Sure. And just asking a lot of questions and being like, okay, what is, what is the goal? If it is this off brand that we're trying to do, or is this on like with the value, with the mission of the company? So I think often what we've done is start with the mission and the vision of the company and then branch off from there because it can easily it can be like, oh, this is a cool video. Who cares right. if it's does a cool it video? Tie, if it does, does it tie in to exactly. the vision? Right. I get yeah, that. Yeah. So, so then I think from there, we've uh, been able to make decisions on like 
okay, who are we trying to target with this product? Mm -hmm. And then creating content that is catering towards that specific person. Um, And whether that's already knowledge that the business owner has, because sometimes they already know their clients really well if they're more established, but sometimes it is doing research and seeing what other people have done serving that client. Um, Because, I mean, I think a great resource is Instagram and uh, using social media to see what other people are pushing out towards specific demographics. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've used that to just see, okay, what's the kind of stuff that people are outputting, whether it's reels, if it's more photo heavy, is it more like testimonials? Is it more like just kind of really trying to understand uh, like what's worked? And is that your market though? I mean, do you do, do you do phone stuff or I mean like as far as like um, how how it looks or or do you stick with the traditional? So I would say production wise, I stick with the traditional gear. I, I don't, I don't, use my iPhone for any of my projects, Okay, but I do export videos in uh, your nine by 16 or your vertical video because it's just popular. Like, I mean, it's what right, people yeah. want. It's, it's like, and the nice thing is because if you have your horizontal video, it's only going to fill up like what, well, maybe a oh quarter of your screen. So, so you're going to cat. So you're going to capture all yeah. of the gorgeous film. Right. And then you're just going to yeah. crop out. <laughs> exactly. Like half, yeah. Half of it. But, but Hey, like you said though, yeah, it works that way. People that a lot of people want to yep. see it that way. Yeah. So um, sometimes if go, go ahead, ahead, sorry, go for it. Well, I was going to say, um, yeah, I wanted so, to talk about business here real quick because yep. you know, a lot Absolutely. of our audience who's watching this, um, mm-hmm. they're going to want to talk about marketing a, a little bit more, an example yep. is when you go out and market right now, what's the number one marketing strategy that's brought you the most business so far? <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I would say that um, the biggest thing right now, I haven't implemented a ton of marketing strategies because okay, uh, even for, like it's almost that thought of uh, even going back to hair. It's like the barber is going to get his haircut last. <laughs> so it is uh, often a little uh, difficult to put the time back in uh, to continue marketing myself. But yeah, you got to get the work found, somehow though, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So there's definitely value into it, but even just this, these past four months, it's been, uh, or past four or five months, it's been a little bit of just like, okay, I'm trying to figure out putting out five other fires. And okay. the last thing that I've uh, put my time to is uh, trying to market myself that way. Sure. But one thing that I have found a ton of value is, um, I'd say through a few, a few different, uh, few different methods is, uh, even just working with photographers and videographers, uh, that's brought me, uh, other business where I can oh, I go see. in and collab and collaborate. Very so, uh, that collaboration alliances. is, I like it. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So working with those strategic, strategic alliances to, um, kind of piggyback off of the marketing that they've already done and the business that they've already done, mm-hmm. but also collaborating to create content that is just awesome. And that looks really cool and provides uh, valuable material for the cuffs for the client. Um, Where so do I'd you, say uh, that's one. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. yeah so I'd say that's one. Uh, but then the other has just been, um, I mean, even just relationships that I've had over years of uh, sure. with biz- with business owners or with, um, decision makers in Ankeny or biz- even business consultants have been a great relationship, like another uh, strategic alliance where uh, they've been able to connect me with clients. Absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. so yeah, I'd say those are also some valuable relationships where I've been able to uh, get a lot of business. And once again, like even that collaboration that comes alongside business consultants is awesome because uh, what they provide is being able to know their client really, really well. And then communicate that to me so that I can produce stuff that works really, really well for their client. Isn't that Um, interesting? Yeah. Let's uh, let's fast. Well, hold on. Let's fast forward here because uh, we've only got so much time, but where do you, where do you see the business going in the next three to five years? Yeah. I mean, I would hope to have more of a team. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, having people who can edit people who can do communications or like some of, some of those things. Cause, um, not that I don't enjoy it, but uh, being able to focus on other areas of the business, whether uh, even in the next three years, if that's uh, me just primarily shooting and then other people doing the communication, other people doing the editing um, and the some of those aspects. Selling, things yeah, like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even if it's structured like that or structured differently, I think 
uh, growing a team would definitely uh, be a desire to uh, um, get more okay. people to collaborate with. Because one thing that I've learned is collaboration is uh, just an amazing way to continue improving uh, a service. And you had uh, better than one. So exactly. Yeah. Cause yeah. I've found that with working on projects with other videographers and I've found that with uh, even just asking some friends or family questions. So uh, I think that's definitely a big value that I have is uh, being able to just not assume that, you know, everything, but be able to be like, Hey, what do you think on this? Like, am I looking at this the right way? And I think Very a team good. would definitely provide just, a lot of like a student yeah. mindset too, Parker. It's not yep. coming at it as if you know everything it's coming at it if you want to learn everything and, and know, yep. and knowing and wanting to learn are two completely different things. And uh, we actually yep. come off very different on that. We've uh, mm -hmm. we, we've covered a lot of ground in our conversation. And uh, for those who are watching, I'd love for to see you guys come back, watch this. Um, and if anything, see where Parker's gone from where he is now to where he is uh, when uh, you watch this again. Keep coming back because I honestly, Parker, I see you going far. Um, but as we begin to wrap up, I've got a few rapid fire mm -hmm. questions. These are okay, quick sweet. top ahead answers. Um, one word or one sentence answers. You ready for this? Okay. Yep. Let's go. What is the key to success for you? Uh, I would say patience. <laughs> <laughs> That's Lots such a good one. That's such a good yep. one. You know, considering like where you're at right now. I love that. Yep. I love it. Just patience. Yep. What yep. is your one piece of advice for other business owners? Um, I mean, I would say kind of like what you said, like having that student mindset is huge because I've even realized that I, there's so many things that I don't know. So being willing to sit, just realize that you don't know it and, yeah. but then not say that's it. okay. Like be, yeah. Be willing like, be like, okay, I don't know it, but finding the avenues where you can learn that oh, and grow right. from that. So yes. yeah. What's one book you're reading right now or have read most recently? Um, so I haven't read a lot of business books, I would say. Um, sure. but one, one book that I do read every day is the Bible. And, okay. uh, so starting off with scripture, uh, at the start of my day and even ending my day with it, that's, uh, always just a discipline that I have daily. So very good. If you mm -hmm. had to choose only one area of your business, you could immediately improve tomorrow. What would it be? Um, I would say definitely, uh, and even in our conversations, uh, previously to this, uh, I would yeah. say sales and marketing is yeah. <laughs> definitely uh, an area that I would love to just continue improving in. Yeah. We need to start getting you some clients, right? Yep. yep. Hey, before we get into the final question of the day, Parker, how can others learn more about you or the company? How can they get in contact? Yeah. So, uh, a great way is going to my website, which is sentcreative.co. Um, so going there, we'll have both my portfolio and then also information about me and the company. So that's an automatic great resource where you can just have materials right there. Uh, but then you can also uh, reach out to me through email, which is Parker at sentcreative.co. So the same website is, uh, um, in the email. And then, uh, you can also shoot me a text or give me a call at 515-771-1686 and, uh, ask for the questions. So perfect. Last question of the day. Mm -hmm. What is most inspiring to you today? Um, I would say today specifically, just realizing that I don't know everything, but I have a lot of people around me that do know solutions to those problems. So I'd say that has inspired me to keep going, especially even this week and today. So that's amazing. Uh, Parker, thank you. As we finish up, I want to express my gratitude to you. Um, this has been really fantastic learning about where you're going on your journey, both as a business and as an owner, right? And, mm -hmm. and thank you for letting me peek behind the scenes to understand more about you and your business. Absolutely. Thanks for just chatting and asking good questions and uh, having me on to talk about it. Absolutely. I can't wait to see where you're going, brother, for, for real. I think it's going to be great. Thanks. This has been the Business Owner Spotlight with Parker Davis from Scent Creative and your host, me, Gabriel Moore with Action Coach, Business Coaching. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.